involving the penetration of uh, the fungi or uh, the nematodes in terms. Okay. And whereas in case of your uh, indirect penetration, they often enter through uh, the wounds which are made by either the insects or it is due to the uh, implements or any other specialized structures produced by the pathogen. Like for example, some of the pathogens are uh, capable of entering through the stomata or the natural openings. Okay? So the indirect penetration is often seen with uh, many of the pathogens like uh, the soil borne pathogens, the post harvest uh, pathogens, which are basically the weak pathogens, you can say. And uh, the virus is often through an indirect way, where often uh, wherever there is an injury or a wound made, so the, the virus can enter easily. And the bacteria. All these organisms are having capability to penetrate through indirect penetration, either through wounds or through the natural openings. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> there is another, uh, one more uh, term that we use often, infection. I think most of you know what is an infection means. Infection, basically, you know, by this time, by the infection of corona, how does it takes place? Basically, if you understand what exactly is an infection means, it is uh, the establishment of the pathogen, the establishment of the pathogen inside the host following the penetration. That is after the penetration, whatever the pathogen is able to establish inside and in which, very importantly, a parasitic relationship a parasitic relationship between the organism of the two organisms has to be established. So that is basically an infection. It is an establishment of a pathogen inside the host following the penetration in which a parasitic relationship has to be built between the two organisms to establish an infection process. Okay. This is an infection. Most of you know about it. Only thing is uh, the right way of defining is they have to establish within inside and develop the parasitic relationship. Okay. And uh, we do have a, a kind of you know, incubation period or it is also called as a infection period. I think in, uh, in COVID, uh, coronavirus, you also know there is an incubation period, seven days, 14 days. It is basically what exactly it is. It is the time interval. It is the interval of time between the, the penetration of uh, the host by the pathogen and uh, what is the symptoms that you see after uh, a period of time and the appearance of a symptom. So normally we say that whenever a person is infected by a coronavirus, uh, it takes around uh, three to four days. That is an incubation period. It is a time period from the penetration of the host by the pathogen and the first symptom appearance on the host is known as an incubation period, which is known uh, for all uh, the type of organisms. And uh, there is uh, another often term that also already we have used that is an epidemiology. Epidemiology. Epidemiology is uh, basically the study of uh, epidemics or uh, the study of the factors that are affecting the outbreak of an infectious disease. What is it? It is the study of factors. What are those factors? These factors can be your temperature, rainfall, your humidity. So all these factors which affect the outbreak of an infectious disease. 
for that matter uh, the epidemiology can be well defined as given by van der plan in 1963 he says that it is the signs of disease in a population so rightly said signs of a disease in a population so we are trying to understand the signs of a particular disease in a population that is in a population refers to in for example if a person who is studying the uh, level of uh, infections and their factors responsible for uh, the development of a particular disease like coronavirus where uh, understanding those signs in a population is termed as a epidemiology and this is uh, applies to all type of uh, living organisms which are being infected or causing a disease and uh, symptoms so i did not elaborate much on this but still it is a matter of fact to say what does exactly the symptoms refers to symptoms are basically the external internal alteration of the host what is it it is a an external and an internal alterations okay in the host as a result of a disease so what is the symptoms that you see whenever you are getting infected by let us say again a coronavirus is something like some people get severe cold some people get feverish and some people face become something like you know very shriveled all these basically external and internal uh, alterations that is uh, seen in a in a host as a result of a disease not just like uh, any Uh, injuries and all cannot be considered as a symptom and in the way syndrome it is also uh, a type of symptom but it is a, a disease plan showing several valuable symptoms that is a, a plant or even any organism for that matter where uh, they are showing several valuable symptoms by which a disease can be recognized a disease can be recognized that is called as syndrome symptom is one type of character whereas a syndrome syndrome is a collective way of uh, saying or defining a disease and uh, that valuable symptoms by which a disease is recognized and i can give one of the examples like your uh, aids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome so what is that a syndrome means it is producing different type of symptoms and by which it can be recognized okay? this is one way of uh, understanding uh, a symptom again or a disease again and often we use a word called as a disease cycle a disease cycle is basically a series of events like for example there is a, a particular uh, spore and it is falling on a leaf and that is uh, basically again causing uh, symptoms on uh, a leaf that is a series of events involved in the disease development that is a series of means stage by stage where it is involved in the disease development and this include the stages of development of the pathogen and the effect of the disease on the host that is every stage the change in the stages for example that uh, mycelium can produce the spores the spores can go and cause a disease on a plant and what is its effect what is its effect is basically the symptoms seen on the leaf and this is called as a disease cycle where it is a series of events involved in the disease development which including the stages of the development of a pathogen underline this because it is also very very important in the disease cycle 
and what effect is seen on the infected plant or disease plant is basically called as a disease cycle and uh, we use a word called as a sign sign is basically in a simple term if i have to put it across if you observe a particular uh, symptom on a particular uh, plant you will see there are some of the pathogenic structures whether it could be a mycelia we will talk about what is mycelia or it could be a spore or it could be a fruiting body or it could be a fruiting body so in a nutshell due to the pathogen manifestation due to the pathogen manifestation some of the structural changes is expressed or it could be associated with the uh, association of the pathogen structures with the symptoms that is some pathogenic structure will be present along with the symptom that is called as a sign simple words the pathogenic structures associated with the symptom is called as a sign and there is a lot of difference between a symptom syndrome and a sign i think by this time you will be able to understand or define what these are exactly okay the other uh, way of understanding some of the other terms is i think you might have known about this which is called as a obligate parasites obligate parasites if you take a, the best example for an obligate parasite is your uh, virus a parasite which restricts to the living tissues simple any organism or a pathogen or a parasite that restricts to a living tissue are called as an obligate parasite in case of uh, the diseases the powdery mildew and downy mildews and even the virus these are all considered to be as a obligate parasites yeah and also we do have a term that we often call as facultative parasites facultative parasites <coughs> these are the organisms which has a life cycle similar to that of your uh, obligate parasite similar to the obligate parasite in that they pass most of the cycles in association with the host but sometimes it can also subsist as a saprophyte also sometimes most of the time it is behaving like a obligate parasite and sometimes it can survive as a saprophyte the best example for this is a smut fungi is a smut fungi the facultative saprophytes another one the facultative saprophytes <laughs> these are normally saprophytes but under certain condition they become parasitic under exceptional condition they become a parasitic but otherwise they are most commonly as a surviving or uh, behaving there in the life cycle as a saprophytic organism so this is uh, two different types of uh, where we oftenly come across with uh, the facultative parasites and facultative saprophytes and of course the what do you mean by a saprophyte you know very well where these organisms have no relationship with the living or living cells that is even there is a living cell or not they secure the nutrition from the dead and uh, organic tissues 
like for example the damping of this is the damping of <coughs> This is which pressure from the dead and the organic substances. And uh, similarly, we have a biotropes often seen in our plants, mainly the plant pathogens, especially. What are the biotropes? One of the example I will just give an example. You will be able to understand that is your rust. Rust is a biotropic organism. so it is basically the biotropes are again obligate parasites they are an obligate parasites but they can be cultured in the laboratory they can be cultured in the laboratory or definitely not in the nature and they require or they obtain the food from the living tissues so they are very similar to that of the obligate parasite except that they can be cultured in the laboratory and in nature they are cannot be cultured and in nature they require a living tissue for uh, the survival or uh, to obtain the food that is called as a biotropic organism and in the same way we have an uh, hemi biotropes hemi biotropic organisms these are the organisms which attack the living tissue similar to that of your biotrope organism but they continue to develop and sporulate even the the tissue is dead okay that is they infect the host similar to that of your biotropes but they continue to develop and sporulate after the tissue is dead even after the death they can survive the example is leaf tissue leaf spots but your biotropes requires a living tissue for obtaining the nutrition whereas your hemibiotropes they attack the tissues living tissues and the pertrotropes these are uh, the organisms that kill the tissue in advance that is these pathogens kill the tissue in advance before the penetration again and then they be a survive like saprophytes then they survive as a saprophytes <laughs> this is uh, uh, basically what we call these as uh, the pertrotropes the example for this is the sclerotium rolsi okay these organisms they kill before penetration and then start uh, getting the nutrition from the dead ones so apart from that we have some of them some terms that we use that is uh, basically called as uh, etiology e e r even sometimes we use uh, like etiology etiology is basically the study of <coughs> the cause the study of cause of a disease its natural factor the nature and relationship with the host etiology is the cause of a disease its uh, causal factor the nature and relationship with the host this is basically called as a etiology and uh, we use as some most of the time as word called as the alternate or alternative host alternate or alternative host 
it is basically one of the two kinds of plants on which a parasitic fungus must develop to complete the life cycle. That is, a particular fung uh, fungi or a pathogen requires two different hosts, host A and host B. And especially to complete life cycle. So one, one stage will be here and another stage will be here. The best example is the wheat and barberry for uh, the rust that is step, stem rust pattern <coughs> for the stem rust pattern. That is one of the two kinds of plants on which a parasitic fungus must develop to complete the life cycle. And also we have a term that is called as the antagonism. This is uh, often used in the biological control. This is often used in the biological control of uh, plant pathogens. What is an antagonism? This is a phenomenon in which an organism inhibits or kills another organism. What is it? It is a phenomenon in which one organism inhibits or kills another organism by the production of uh, the toxic substances, which are often called as the antibiotics, or by parasitism or by the predation or even the competition. Either of these, where one is not allowing to grow the other one. Like one of your friend, let us say, he is not allowing you to read, not allowing to eat, so he is being antagonized. He is being antagonized. And also we have a term that is called as an antibiosis. An antibiosis is an inhibition of the organism or its uh, death by the action of toxic metabolites, mainly by production of toxins or antibiotics. So that is the difference between that to anti uh, antagonism and this one here is the antibiosis <coughs> is purely because of the toxins, whereas Antagonism is due to toxins, parasitism, predation, and even the competition. Okay. The antigen, the antigen is, I think uh, now you have that uh, COVID-19 testing kit. One is RT-PCR and another one is antigen testing kit. So antigens are uh, any foreign proteins. Any foreign proteins, occasionally, basically they are complex lipids, carbohydrates, or sometimes the nucleic acids, which upon in in injection to a warm-blooded animal, this, when it is, inoculated or injected into a warm-blooded animals, they produce antibodies against that antigen. <coughs> what could be the antigens? Even your virus particle, virus particles are the part of the mycelia of a fungus or it could be the whole cell. Anything can become a foreign protein upon which when you inhale, you inhale a lot of microbes. During that particular time, you do see come across with uh, the production of the antibiotics. 
sorry, antibodies, basically. Okay. And uh, often we use a term that is called the Avon land. We often use a term that is called the virulent and a virulent strain. A virulent strain is uh, a strain of a pathogen which lacks so called as a vigor or a virulence. Lacks the virulence or a vigor. This way. Bioassay is a, a, a very common term that has been used in biological sciences, especially in the plant sciences. Bioassay is basically the testing the toxicity of the substance. That is, testing the toxicity of the substance on the test organism. Why? Because to measure the relative efficacy against, <coughs> against the target pathogen. That is, it is one of the method to assess the toxicity level on a target or a model organism. And I think, uh, In your entomology previous course, you might have understood what is the biocontrol. Biocontrol or biological control is basically a total or a partial inhibition. What is it? It is a total or a partial inhibition or the destruction of the population of the pathogen by using another organism or other organism. That is, we are using uh, an, another organism to kill another organism, which might be a partial or it might be a total. Biotype is uh, a term often used for a uh, an organism or uh, the subspecies level organism. Biotype is a subdivision of physiological races. A subdivision of a physiological races, mainly for the fungus mainly for the fungus. And uh, a division of species, subspecies, or a serotype in bacterial, of a serotype of a bacterial strains is distinguished by some special physiological characters. So morphologically, everything is same, but they differ with respect to their biochemical and the ability to infect the host, the biotypes. Okay. Culture is a term that is often used. The culture is the growth of an organism on an artificial medium. And remember, all your most of your fungal and bacterial can be grown on artificial. Most of them, not all, most of them. Okay. And uh, the cyst, where the cyst is basically a carcass of a dead females, which are produced uh, oftenly by uh, the heterodera and uh, the globodera species. That is, it is a kind of uh, uh, 
uh, dead carcass which is produced by the females. And often this cyst consists of uh, so-called as uh, the egg and uh, larva, the egg and the larva. The egg and the larva. And we have, uh, sometimes we use, very often we use disease incidence. The disease incidence is where the number of plants the number of plants infected per unit area. The number of plants infected per unit area. And it is calculated in terms of uh, as a percentage. Okay, so we were the disease incidence is where the number of plants affected per unit area, and often it is expressed in terms of a percentage. The percentage, like for example, out of hundred, two are infected. So the the percentage where you can see is two percent. The disease incidence is two percent, and uh, the term that often we use dissemination. Dissemination is basically the spread of the inoculum. There is a, it's a spread of the inoculum from the source of the disease to the healthy plants. And in a defined geographical location. Like for example, a person X infected with coronavirus and the person Y got infected and because of which this is called a dissemination. The spread of the inoculum from the source, so this is a source to the healthy, the healthy man. This is basically we call this as a dissemination and uh, ELISA is a, is a test method which is called as an enzyme linked immunosorbent assay uh, where when we start our practicals we will come to know what it is and we will get to your practicals soon. So where uh, the ELISA is a serological test in which simply is a very simple where you have an antigen for which you have an antibody. So for this antigen, when you inoculate in a ELISA plate, you will see the color change because they are interacting. That is a protein to protein interaction. The protein to protein interaction. We have uh, some terms that use in fungus that is called heterosseous. I was telling uh, when I was talking about the historical significance. Heterosseous is a nature of a fungi or a pathogen requiring two hosts to complete the life cycle. <coughs> the heterosseous fungus. This type of fungus requires two different hosts to complete the life cycle. And uh, we always use in especially in case of the plant pathogenic fungi, which is also called as an anamorph or asexual stage or imperfect stage. So in, in plant fungi, plant pathological fungi, 
state in which the pathogen undergo the asexual <coughs> asexual life cycle of the fungi the asexual life cycle of the fungi where there, there is no production of the sexual spores it is often seen in many of the group of fungi causing plant diseases they have both sexual stage as well as asexual stage hence two scientific names okay so do not get confused but that we will try to uh, understand more when we go in when we talk about more and more lesion is one word often used <laughs> a lesion is basically a necrotic or a dark brown a necrotic area of a disease or disorder tissue often we use a word called as lesion so the symptoms appear like a dark brown lesion something okay pathogenicity is uh, which is coach robert coach who which he defined the pathogenicity is the ability of a pathogen to cause the disease what is it it is the ability of the pathogen to cause the disease pathovar or pathotype pathovar is very common it is very often in case of bacterial uh, scientific names so it is again a subdivision of a species subdivision of a species which is distinguished by a common character of pathogenicity that is ability of a particular strain to infect a particular host that is called as a pathogenicity a particular host strain for example xanthomonas auxinopodis pathovar citri only infecting stress another one xanthomonas auxinopodis pathovar cunica infecting pomegranate see here up to here it is the same here it is differing that is these are the pathovars and uh, we have a uh, similar to that of the imperfect stage we have a perfect stage again which is also called as the teleomorph or it is also called as uh, the the sexual stage where this particular stage produces sexual life cycle of the pathogen the sexual life cycle of the pathogen and uh, we always use the primary infection the primary infection is basically the initial infection caused by the pathogen on a host plant after a period of uh, rest or a dormancy that is uh, some pathogens survive in soil or in seed so after that period of time so they cause the first infection that is called as a the primary infection we have a term that is called as a protectant fungicides where a fungicide which protects the host against the invasion of the pathogen before penetration that is before the invasion itself it is going to stop the infection process and we have a term that is called the resting spores <coughs> many of your uh, pathogens or like a spore basically produced for a survival purpose of a pathogen especially when there is no crop 
or uh, when there is an off season in a dormant condition and uh, they can germinate when they were there in the when they are provided with a favorable condition means they are the kind of structures produced for the purpose of survival of the pathogen during the off season secondary infection secondary infection is uh, basically inoculum produced by the primary infection that you can what what, what we discussed earlier that is the inoculum produced by the primary infection that is helping to allow or capable of spreading a disease secondary is always for the spread of a disease okay the primary is to cause the first infection secondary is basically to spread the disease okay and uh, there are some terms which often we use as uh, the susceptibility the virulence and uh, all these type of things which we will over the period of time we'll talking we'll keep be talking about those things of course there are several several terms but we will now uh, get into uh, and another uh, topic about which is most important one which is called as a disease triangle what is a disease triangle a disease triangle basically if you consider uh, what is uh, a, a disease triangle a disease triangle basically is a component of uh, three major events one is the host pathogen and the environment the host pathogen the host pathogen and the environment that is the total condition that favor the disease development total condition that favor the disease development so for a disease to appear you need to have all these three factors you need to have a virulent pathogen favorable environment and susceptible host this is called as a disease triangle and uh, of course uh, recently the time is also included that we will define how it is in sync the factors how do each of them are going to influence if we consider the how the pathogen how the pathogen affects one is virulence it should be highly virulent to to cause a disease the population how much population is available near the host and what is the life stage of the propagator propagule is basically the 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 pathogen structure which is which is is which is ready to infect and uh, for viral diseases vectors vectors present so these are all the pathogenic uh, factors responsible for a disease triangle but when it come to the host it is the level of resistance the level of resistance and the growth stage whether it is in the seedling stage or it is maturity stage so when this pathogen can infect and the growth uniformity 
the growth uniformity of the neighboring plants that is in the neighboring next to field or in the next uh, neighboring plants and what about the plant vigor whether the plant is having high vigor or a low vigor low vigor more susceptible high vigor less susceptible plant density if the plant density is high the spread of the disease is very very high and if the density is low basically the spread is slow and the lastly the structure of the plant if the structure of the canopy is very crowded basically it is often where the disease spread is very very high and the environmental conditions what environmental conditions that we see the conditions that favor conditions favoring disease conditions that uh, promote the plant growth and uh, conditions that uh, affect the dispersal affect the dispersal what are the environmental factors that are basically considered one is the relative humidity temperature wind rainfall and sometimes even the sunlight but these three are the major factors that are going to determine so remember whenever we talk about uh, the disease triangle the length of uh, each side the length of each side is proportional to the sum total of characteristics of each component that favors the disease that is the length of each side is proportional to sum total of characteristics of each component that is going to favor the disease means every component has to be in a equal length it should be proportional like for example if uh, one side is zero that is if there is no host at all you cannot see a disease or if the environment is not favoring then one side is zero and in case if one side is large then the disease size can also be large though you have uh, the pathogen less inoculum or the susceptible host is available still you can see a disease so this is uh, <laughs> about uh, the disease triangle which we will be talking more in detail in uh, the next semester but however uh, this is for our introduction what do you mean by a disease triangle so basically uh, all these three factors are important and again i have mentioned the time factor is also now included and obviously there is one more factor but it is not a major one that is a human but disease triangle refers to the host pathogen environment and uh, disease tetrahedron is your time in time inclusion is your time inclusion okay so this is uh, about some of the terms that we need to be knowing before we get into the actual syllabus part actually we have started with the syllabus but uh, often we will be using these words so hence you need to be familiarized with these words so let us stop here and if you do have any questions do let me know tomorrow we will uh, next class we will start with uh, uh, a new chapter
Okay. This is uh, basically the disease triangle where the length of uh, each side, okay, the length of each side of your disease triangle is proportional to the sum total of characteristics. What is that sum total of your characteristics? Whether it could be uh, the pathogen uh, population or the virulence, okay? It is a sum total of the characteristics of each component. Each component is, whether it could be a pathogen component or the host component. And that is, should be favoring the disease, <clears throat> okay? That should be favoring a disease. For example, you have a sufficient pathogen population, but your host is resistant. That is, one side is zero. So the disease is less. Whereas the pathogen, the, sorry, the pathogen, the pathogen, where it is present in a larger amount with a susceptible host, so both sides are large. So what each side should be proportional to the sum total of characteristics of each component that favor disease. Underline this, that each component should favor the disease development. Okay. And uh, one more question. Petovars. <clears throat> okay. Petovar is basically a subspecies classification. Okay, I mentioned somewhere here. Yeah. So here, if you see what is a pathovar mean, see, it is often used for the bacterial subspecies classification. Okay. And uh, it is purely based on the pathogenicity, pathogenicity to a particular host <coughs> capable of infecting a particular host. I took an example of uh, one. Uh, bacteria infecting uh, citrus and pomegranate. This is Xanthomonas auxinopodis petovar citri. You can see that this is a subspecies classification. Here it is a subspecies classification. These are petovars, petovars, and Xanthomonas auxinopodis petovar punicae infecting pomegranate. So this is often seen in case of the bacterial subspecies classification. Yeah, very good. What is a biotype about? Biotype is again a subspecies classification where it is very similar to this, but biotype is biochemically varying. And it has a particular host. This is all the wheat varieties. Okay, I'm just talking, please uh, make a note of this. I'm talking about a wheat varieties. I'm not talking about a wheat and a oak. Wheat A, B, C, D, E, and F. If you inoculate a particular biotype one to this wheat, so each of the plant expresses the symptoms in a different way. And the number two, if the two biotype, if you inoculate to this, all uh, the wheat varieties, this will differ with from one. That is called as a biotype, or it is also called as a race. Morphologically similar, genetically similar, they differ with respect to biochemical and infectivity to a particular genotype. I repeat, infectivity to a particular genotype then it could be called as a biotype or it could be a race. Okay. I hope I made it you clear. If no more questions, I will stop here and uh, we will have uh, the next class starting with a new chapter to understand what is fungi. Okay. What is fungi? What are the characteristics? And uh, <clears throat> maybe slightly in the very beginning, it would be very difficult for you to understand. So maybe I will try to go slow so that it will be more comfortable. Okay. Okay. Let us next class. See you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.